Our first goal in this last video of this lecture is to prove theorem 13 in section 14.2, which remember, we already proved a really big part of it, this thing that I split off and called proposition 13 star. So what do we have left to do in this theorem 13 is we're giving another way to understand when an extension is Galois. We'll prove that K over F is Galois if and only if K is a splitting field over F for some separable polynomial f of x in f bracket x. In one direction, we proved a little while ago already. Proposition five showed that the splitting field of a separable polynomial f of x in f bracket x is Galois, that it gives a Galois extension of f. So all we have to do is prove the forward direction, that every Galois extension is the splitting field over f of some separable polynomial f of x in f bracket x. And OK, so Galois extensions are finite extensions at this point. So let's suppose that k over f is Galois. And let's, uh, so we know we have a finite extension. So it's generated over f by finitely many algebraic elements. So let's name those elements. Let's say that omega 1 up through omega n. That'll be a basis for k over f. For each one of these omegas, let's name its minimal polynomial. So let pi of x be the minimal polynomial of omega i over f. And now, by proposition 13 star, what do we know about these polynomials? They're irreducible in f bracket x. And the minimal polynomial of omega i has a root that's in k. Omega i is a root of that polynomial. So it has one root in k. Because k over f is Galois, each one of these polynomials is separable and has all of its roots in k. OK, so the big idea is going to be to think about the splitting field of the product of all of these polynomials. But the product of all of these polynomials that might have some multiple factors. It might have some multiple roots. So it's not necessarily separable. So that's not quite getting us to where we want, the splitting field over f of a separable polynomial. So one big idea is we're going to take the product of all of these polynomials and make a separable polynomial out of it. So what we're going to do is let g of x be the square free part of the product p1 of x times p2 of x times 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 pn of x. So what do we do? We take the product. This is some polynomial in f bracket x. And then we're going to remove any repeated factors that are in this product. So we want a product of irreducibles in uh, f bracket x, where each one occurs at most once. OK. So what is true is g of x and this product, they have the same set of roots, but maybe with different multiplicities. Like maybe there was the square of some irreducible factor in this product, and we replace that square of the irreducible with just the irreducible itself. So we're taking some roots of multiplicity two, and in g of x, we'll just have the same roots, but of multiplicity one. So the square free part and this product, they have the same roots, maybe with different multiplicities. So what does that mean? The splitting field of g of x is the splitting field of this product. Why? I mean, what is the splitting field? It's a field over which all of, uh, over which this polynomial splits completely into a product of linear factors. And no proper subfield has that property. So if g of x splits completely into a product of linear factors, then the same is true of this product and vice versa. One, another way to think about it is, where do you get a splitting field from? You adjoin all of the distinct roots of the polynomial of which you are taking the splitting field. OK, so all the roots of these polynomials, by these polynomials, I mean g of x and this product, they all lie in k. Why? Because we know that each factor, each one of these pi of x polynomials, has all of its roots in k. So all of the roots of the product 
lion k, and similarly, all of the roots of g of x lion k. And what is some set that you know lies in this set of roots? Omega one up through omega n is in this set of roots because omega i is a root of pi of x. So uh, we want to compare this splitting field for g of x to this field k. But we know the splitting field for g of x contains omega one up through omega n, and it's contained in k. But omega one up through omega n are a basis for k over f. So any subfield of k that contains omega one up through omega n contains all of k. So what does that mean? k is the splitting field for this polynomial g of x over f. OK, so that completes the proof, is we're seeing another way to understand whether or not this finite extension k over f is a Galois extension. We already knew that if k was a splitting field over f for a separable polynomial in f bracket x, then k over f was a Galois extension. But now we know the other direction, that every Galois extension is given by the splitting field over f of some separable polynomial. OK, so I'm going to pause and erase, and I'm going to write down a result that summarizes all of the different ways that we know to understand whether or not an extension is a Galois extension. Let's end this lecture by talking about all the different ways that we know to determine whether a finite extension is a Galois extension. So I'm going to say that this is a proposition. This isn't stated formally as a proposition in dominant foot, so I don't have a number for it. But what we want to prove is that for every finite extension, for a finite extension k over f, the following are equivalent. One, the degree of k over f is the number of automorphisms of k fixing f. OK, what is one? This is the definition of what it means for k over f to be a Galois extension. Two, k is a splitting field over f of a separable polynomial f of x in f bracket x. And one if and only if two, this is theorem 13 that we just proved, that k over f is Galois if and only if two holds. Three, the fixed field of the group of automorphisms of k fixing f is f itself. One if and only if three is corollary 10 that we proved at the beginning of this lecture. And four, k over f is separable and is normal. OK, so since we've talked about two different definitions of what it means to be normal, let me say that what I mean is every irreducible polynomial in f bracket x with a root in k has all of its roots in k. OK, so proposition 13 star says two implies four, or really maybe it says one implies four, but we know one holds if and only if two holds. So, uh, okay, so if we want to say that these are all equivalent, we just need to prove that four implies two. So let's prove that. And what we're going to see is that this is exactly the argument we just saw for theorem 13. So what do we know? k over f is some finite extension, so it's generated over f. Uh, k is generated over f by finitely many algebraic elements. So let's name them. k is generated over f by alpha 1 up through alpha n, where each one of these alpha i's is algebraic over f. Let's name the minimal polynomial of each of these alpha i's. pi of x is the minimal polynomial of alpha i over f. It's an irreducible polynomial in f bracket x. OK, by assumption. This is a separable extension. So uh, every uh, the minimal polynomial of any al el element alpha i in k is a separable polynomial in f bracket x. So each pi of x is separable. And by assumption, we're assuming 4 is true. pi of x is an irreducible polynomial in f bracket x that has a root in k. So all of its roots are in k. So each pi of x has all of its roots in k. And now we want to show that k is a splitting field for some separable polynomial 
in F bracket X. Uh, yeah, is a splitting field over F for some separable polynomial in F bracket X. So what polynomial is it going to be? Well, what did we do in the proof of theorem 13? We took all of these minimal polynomials. We multiplied them together. That's a polynomial, but it's not necessarily separable. So we took the square free part. And we're going to do exactly the same thing here. Let g of x be the square free part of this product, p1 of x times 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 pn of x. And we see, using exactly the same argument, that k is a splitting field for the separable polynomial g of x over f. OK. So for a finite extension, k over f, what does it mean to be a Galois extension? Well, it means the degree of the extension is equal to the order of the group ought k over f. It means that k is a splitting field over f of some separable polynomial. It means that the fixed field of the group of automorphisms of k fixing f is f. And it means that k over f is separable and is normal that every irreducible polynomial in f bracket x with a root in k has all of its roots in k. So if you can verify any one of these four properties, that means that your extension is Galois. OK, now we're ready to talk about the fundamental theorem of Galois theory, this main correspondence theorem between subgroups of the Galois group and subfields of K. And we will state and prove this main theorem in the next lecture.